Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Nanyan Championships. We are live here in the European Qualifier. Of course, I'm LD. I have the rare pleasure of being joined by Mr. Benjamin Wu. I chose the wrong color shirt this morning. Yes. Actually, the one color I couldn't wear. You, you broke the... I'm not sure why, though, because he's wearing a green shirt, and as some of you probably realize, we have a green screen. Hey, I'm on black. But it's just... Yeah, you're, it's kind nice. of, you're kind of ghostly, but not as much as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's only in one. There was one time where I think, I think someone wore one, and they were just like a floating head, and like arms sticking out of the shirt or something. It's, really it's much good. more creepy. Yeah. So, uh, okay, Ben. Uh, it's been a little while since I've gotten a cast with you, buddy, so... I also haven't slept, so carry me, please. Dude, this be, draft went by in like a, a minute. Yeah, yeah, we 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 were like a minute late. We loaded to start right the when yeah, right when the game loaded, and then there was like one broadcaster that wouldn't Result load. Time. Okay, let let's see how my speed drafting is here. So, first overall pick goes Lee of Empire. They grab the lean, the replies, the dark sire winter, dark seer winter wyvern, and then Empire grabbed the gyrocopter in phase two. They then a tusk quap for Foof Youngs, the anti mage beast master. Interestingly, a Fada classic removed by Empire. Into the second stage, where we will have a Storm Spirit snap up by the five boys. The reply, a lion to lock them down. And Empire also going to grab that dazzle to help keep heroes alive. And the five boys Ten will round seconds. things out with two of the spirits now grabbing the fire one. I kind of like the Ember remaining. Spirit here. There's not that many heroes that can actually deal with the Lena late game as well as contest um, fights early. So mm -hmm. he kind of fits both of those roles. Am and Phantom Lights are both receiving very early bans. Seems like seems like both of these heroes, I'd say even especially the Anti-Mage, uh, have been rising in terms of Ten power rankings for remaining. teams. They Like you look at like certain teams like uh, Cloud9, like Ritsu's Anti-Mage is getting first remaining. stage banned a lot of drafts, whereas... You go back to TI, I felt like he was a lot more situational. Yeah, before I thought he was like, I thought he was decent, but now after seeing everyone pick him, I'm just like, well, he just does a lot of things better than everyone else. But we do see some stranger bands. We see the Beastmaster band. Empire actually plays that occasionally, so it would have been okay versus their lineup, but I don't know. Beastmaster, just not, not his patch. Glimmer destroys most of what anyone has to throw at people, especially single target. Yeah, that, that to me is very much just a, a respect ban. Like, it's something that Fada yeah. historically is is very good at. They have played it a few times on the patch. It's not. I wouldn't say I was ever Selena. blown away by it, though. Yeah, it, it's even if you play it amazingly well, it's still not, I, I would say, an amazing pick here. Undying to round things out. A little bit of survivability. Uh, some decent synergy with Darkseer and Winter Wyvern. You can definitely keep the Tombstone alive and healthy with Winter's Curse and Vacuum. Hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty strong team fight synergy. Of course, you've got your Ion Shell Ember Spirit as well. Can be very feisty in the early to mid game. I was laughing at Yolo Warrior's name, and then I saw his hero. And I was like, "This <laughs> so makes sense. This makes sense." All right. It's it's a tough lineup to play Spirit Breaker against, though. So you I'm I'm actually not sure for Yolo Warrior. I I think I'm pretty sure he's either Fervian or Uba, and then. Jotam is standing in for the one that's not here, but I'm not 100%, so I, if anybody does know in the chat, please let us know. I was looking at his pub profile, and there is not that much about this guy. Right, he goes by YW sometime, short for Yolo Warrior. Yolo Warrior. Oh, it's Uba. It's Uba. Okay. Well, I might be saying his name wrong. I think someone was telling me he's actually Ivan, but <laughs> what could I say? I'm butchering it like, like all Americans do. All right, Ben. First game in a while. You ready? I need to fiddle with my console. All right. While you're fiddling, I'll, I'll do the introductions here. We've got Empire on the Radiant Squad side. Aloha Dance will be handling the Lion Silent on the Gyrocopter. They look to defend their jungle early from the Five Boys invasion. Jotam will be playing the Dazzle, standing in. Resolution handling your Corlina will be going solo mid. Early Tango's pulled up. And then Yolo Warrior, or Ivan... I believe, on the Spear Breaker in the offlane. Someone's going to flame me in like two minutes exactly for that pronunciation, but here we go. <laughs> the five boys. Jerax on the Winter Wyvern. Matumba Man that. will be playing your Ember Spirit. Mind Control, the offlaner, will handle the Darkseer. Kuro on the Undying support, and that does leave Fada on the store mid. So they, they ban that Beastmaster out, but it seems the five boys had something else in store. I really like... Uh, five jungles line up way more than empires like empires is they have like a lot of overlap they have a lot of magical damage overlap i think with lena and lion which is very difficult to burst people down when there's a winter wyvern in the game especially if he's allowed to farm a glimmer cape and then speed breaker is like decent but it's oh on top 
Mm. A lot of early pressure here. Stun coming out from Yellow Warrior. Tries to charge. Doesn't have the bash, of course. So he's not really able to kill Matumba, man. In fact, Matumba almost thinking about going back in there. Looking to bait him up that ramp where they could really punish him. But close call. And uh, hey, that's the, the level one Ion Shell here. So we see the power of that Ember Spirit early on. And man, look at Kuro. What a jerk. Just comes around, decaying from the backside. Pokey poke. Yeah, I think I think they have like stronger lanes. They have stronger team fight. They have uh, probably slightly better late game if their like supports get decent farm too and can protect them. So, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not terribly confident in Empire's lineup. So you mentioned you like uh, you think Ember is one of the better heroes versus Lina. Yeah. Was, do you want to? Can you expand oh, on that okay. a little so bit? So he's one of the very few heroes that can almost always reliably escape the uh, the. The Yules combo. The Yules combo. Like, even PL with no cast time on his uh, Doppelwalk, like, has some issues because he has a turn to cast his spells. But for Ember, you don't actually need a turn to cast your Slight, nor do you need a turn to cast your ulti. So you've got two ways to dodge it, potentially. Yeah, oh, and, you have, and you have your Flame Guard. Uh, also, he's pretty good versus YOLO Warrior on his Spirit oh, Breaker. He's busy YOLOing top lane, gets yep. caught out by the chains, will end up giving up the first blood. The roaming, ganking zombie man gets the job done. Actually did have a ward scouting that rotation. I also like his build too. You'll see a lot of embers go for a poor man shield first. I guess it's more a mid build, but he went like a lot of regen and a clarity so he can keep up the pressure in the lane, especially because he knows he's very unlikely to be contested. Lion is pretty terrible in aggro lanes, mm -hmm. so it's a pretty safe bet that he's only going to be versus one or two. Yeah, and good news for that Lion. Aloha Dance is doing a bit of pulling right now with, together with Jotam and they have force mind control off of the off lane, so he goes back to the woods. Looks like he'll begin farming up the stacks here. Double damage ring gonna spawn. Jerex will snag that right away, but there is a radiant ward here, so definitely should see the gank coming on mid. Yeah, resolution definitely gonna have to back off though. So early on, it seems that the pressure has been quite successful. Lena seven and one against a fourteen and six storm already. Yeah, and bottom lane's not getting that much. They failed the stack at 1 and 2, and also Jotam has one level of Poison Touch, which means if he TPs, he's not going to save anyone with that. Uh, I mean, it's definitely useful for zoning out the Darkseer, but in terms of overall game impact, it's going to be minimal, and he really needs his experience ASAP. That mid gank attempted as Jerax will flap in, but the Arctic Burn, no match for resolution, moving away. I mean, this guy just has to worry about everything. You're worried about, like, a tombstone zombie from behind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you look at this draft, it's like, okay, really? Five boys, not that crazy of an early roaming lineup. But yeah, they really they're don't. just playing it like they are. <laughs> it's working. I mean, Fada's not supposed to be able to play this aggressively with a Sphere Breaker in the game, but with the ward on top and with the way that Lena has been, like, semi-contained, it's pretty easy for him to just get a ton of CS. So they are just trying to take advantage of that jungle as much as possible. Mind control off farming up with Iron Shell for the Radiant side. Jotam still only level one here. Yeah, where are their stacks? They only have two stacks, which I think is actually really low for the way they've been playing. Uh, keep in mind, there hasn't been an offlane here for like two and a half minutes. So they they only have two big stacks, and that's it. Yeah, Dazzle ran over towards mid. Uh, maybe they missed one of the stacks as well. And it's put them in a bit of a hole here as the YOLO Warrior getting caught out a bit. Chains are available. We'll catch him. Thinking about a charge, but there's nowhere good to charge to. And while he's busy contemplating, he's really good die. about his slight timing, like he or his uh, searing chains timing. Oh, auto. Yeah, taking a lot of harassment here, but he'll be okay. Twenty-seven and eight. Yeah, that's it's just is, the fear factor from Lena. A, a stomp. Yeah, it, it's it's really difficult for positioning for resolution. If he stands too far to the left, that's where Winter Wyvern comes in. If he stands too far to the right, he gets backstabbed by a Tombstone potentially. So it's it's like not easy at all for and, him to. And a lot of the it's this radiant ward. It, it doesn't see these rotations that come through the river. It, even if he sees a hero run down the river, he doesn't know if they're up on his hill, if they've backed off to the jungle. So resolution is is basically playing. I wouldn't say totally in the dark, but mostly yeah. in the dark. And the sacrifice that you get for that ward is like, well, you sacrifice mid lane to ensure your top lane. And top lane is doing terribly. So the trade off that they gotten from placing the ward much higher than normal is 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 not worth it. The, he's already died twice, and it hasn't even been. Uh, I guess kind of the undying, but they would have spotted him anyways with the lower ward. Only good piece of news is he is getting his levels here. He's level four, but at the same time, the Darkseer is, and he's not dying. So, not the best trade. 
Yeah, Ember is going to get out of control, I think, pretty soon. Because Dazzle's just almost free food uh, for him. No way to take off <laughs> his uh, Flame Guard and not that much survivability. So I, I think if Dazzle doesn't start doing stuff soon... Like, he can actually almost just, like, run into their lineup without really that much fear. Like, a single target charge on him is not that big of a deal. They have, like, Vacuum Wall and Tombstone and Soul Rip and all these things to back it up. And Winter's Curse, Cold Embrace. There is a lot of nuke damage once they get their levels. Like, Gyrocopter, level 5 already. Uh, Lena getting her ult soon. And eventually the Finger of Death. Yeah. But as long as he's careful about getting caught by those big nukes, then he should be able to... It requires, it requires better positioning, though, because uh, Dyer has ways to reposition themselves way more easily with mm -hmm. the Storm and the, and the Undying. And then and even the Surge. Yeah, got, of course. that's true. And everyone can kind of just like walk around that, whereas Empire, they have to work around not getting owned by Winter's Curse, not getting hit by like dual Searing Chains, not getting Dyer's owned by Storm Zip, not getting hit attack. by Double Decays. Like, their positioning in teamfights is just incredibly difficult. Yeah, we're going to hear a lot of zip zap over here, over there, and <laughs> just balancing all things. <laughs> it feels like if this goes the way that the five boys are hoping for. So do you want to point out, Ben, that Fada has a, a haste turn bottled up, and oh, Aloha Dance, he smoked. I was going to say, if this lion just ran up the river, he could be an easy kill. Already Fada looking to scout out the jungle, doesn't see Dyer's anything going on there. Won't find Resolution, who has now cracked level six. But it looks like they want to make a play here bottom lane. Unfortunately, nobody's home. Just going to show Kuro on mid, mind control kind of hanging out in the neighborhood. And now that TP comes bottom. The patience for Aloha Dance may pay off. Jurex wants that delicious, juicy experience. Give it to me. Oh, now he's stunned. Call down to follow. Poison touches there, and Jurex will bite the dust. But still the pressure comes towards mid as they roam even deeper. And Alphada has found a stack. That's a quick, easy triple grabbed with the Ion Shell. Grand Theft creeps. Over on the bottom side of the map. That's actually, I think, really worth it for Dyer. They, they they don't lose a tower. They sacrifice their Glyph and their Winter Iron. But I think they took a three Dyer's stack right there. And Resolutions, they, they even played an award. He's looking at the stack and he <laughs> he's just sad. like, what, what the hell is yeah. going on over here? <laughs> yeah, you can tell by the pings. That's the angry pings coming out. It's like, dude, where's my stack? What happened? Especially because he knows he's losing mid as well. So yeah. now, he's, now he's really salty. Because now when's his, when's his Yule's going to come out? Like he has to be able to get like two or three kills in a fight to get it at like a reasonable timing. And it goes to your other point, which is that they didn't really stack the other big camp. Yep. So he's really, he's feeling the burn, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not the good kind of burn. The one that you all should be voting for. <laughs> Keep the politics out of the And case. now, now Fada has regen. Oh, no. Hmm. So, obviously for the five boys, this is a great start. They're getting farm on all three cores here. And in terms of net worth and experience, it's, it's even. But they've gotten past that... Slightly weaker laning stage you sometimes see out of an Ember or a Storm Bend. So they're they're yeah. coming online now. We got to see if this bottom tower is going to be held or not. Like Storm has a regen, so he can hold it. But oh, he almost got owned by Lina in mid. But this hold is going to be. It has to come now. Instead, Fada's the man making the moves here. Has the regen rune bottled up. He's going to TP his way towards the bottom lane. And now the engagement breaks out. Two hero chains, but caught on to try and counter it. They got the tombstone down on the backside. And off the bat, they've lost two. They're about to drop Jotam as well. Three heroes crumble. The Foof Young showing no mercy. As they do hold the tower, it was in the end taken by the Radiant. So they get the last hit on the tower. But they throw three bodies away just for that. It was slightly late. They had four people there, but I think the Empire thought they could take it with Storm being so low. But again, the regen room. He was at like 200 HP, zero mana, and then zipped away, and then regen full and TP and just owned them all. Uh, let's see. Ember Spirit also got a. I mean, look at their jungle right now. Fod is still taking the stacks. <laughs> this is just. Honestly, oh ra okay, here's the play Radiant Team just ward blocks that camp. Oh my then there's goodness. no creeps for the five boys to steal. I mean, Fada just, he, he took two camps as well as blocked the eight minute and is taking their other large camp. And takes all their, and then takes all the runes. Gank's bottom is more involved in kills. Yeah, it's, it's just a nasty life for Lina. Though. They they really need some sort of roaming going on. Again, Dazzle's not that great at roaming and he can't pressure the Storm very hard because Storm has a lot of armor, but... I'm not sure. Lion tried to concentrate on bottom tower, but he focuses efforts on that, and they got triple killed. So it is just disaster. We just haven't. It just doesn't feel like Empire's really been able to control the game. They 
They try lane bottom, the Darkseer leaves the lane, they don't really farm that efficiently. Then they smoke gank bottom, they only get a Wyvern, and they give up their stacks for that. And now they're gonna go smoke. But the Dire team has those good wards placed down, Ben, so they may well expect this type of movement. And Aloha Dance only level 4 at 9 minutes in. It's one of those Lena games where you have to get treads before your staff of wizardry. Because you're having a really tough time and you know you're not going to get Yules anytime soon. So I think I think it's a fine build for him to go. If he gets like two kills right here, then he he can get his Yules at a good timing. They're going to make their move. They do get the Hex off on Fada. Tombstone getting dropped. So try and keep him alive here. Kuro in position. Dropping the heal. Not enough. A full chain stun to bring him down. So they take out the storm as Yellow Warrior drops low. Grave was used. Zoning him back is silent with the call down. They'll get a second kill. Empire finding their footing here as they'll now blow up the Tombstone. Chase on the Kuro. And keep on diving. He has another stun, but the Ember's there with a triple remnant. No, he doesn't actually go in just yet. Gets stunned, now jumps forward as they back out in the nick of time. Could have been disastrous if Matubba Man hit everyone with that damage. But still continues pursuit, has the chains available. He needs a Surgeon. Now he gets it, now he gets it. He wants to go, but Aloha Dance has, is ready with the stun. And if he had gotten that off before the stun, that would have been devastating. That was two more kills, I think. Yeah, easily two, I would say possibly three. Lena's haste was expiring, and now she got a haste rune as well as a regen rune. So the ties have turned for that, and now he can, like, okay, I can get my yields at a decent timing. That was, that was a very good smoke gank. They also had, like, good vision over there, whereas uh, Dyer doesn't have observer wards anywhere. Except on the bottom tower, but they're not really in They've the got area. these wards that don't actually see much in terms of like territory, but they have like potentially very valuable little corners they of the They think map. their advantage is a lot bigger than it actually is. They still need to, you know, do the normal things, take T1s and then control their jungle. They're skipping a step, which is just taking their jungle ahead of time, which mm -hmm. is not that bad if you just want to steal stacks, but if you actually want to like take fights and kills, then it's very dangerous. Tumbo Man poking his head out bottom lane. He has gone into the treads, Aquila, so tanking up a bit. I've seen the storm for now. Grab the Soul Rain. Generally, I'll say Fada has seemed to favor the Bloodstone a bit. Do you do you, do you reckon it's a Bloodstone kind of game, or, or would you like to see yeah. like an Orchid? I first? think he just needs to tank up. I think he just need to survive the initial burst, the the Lina stun into like Laguna, the finger, the call down, the charge, the Nether Strike, and after that, like you, you know, once they use like Soul Rip. A cold Embrace, Winter's Curse, Counter Vacuum. Like once they use all those, then they'll just go crazy in fights because their tombstone will be up and alive. So it's just about surviving that burst, which is why you'll see him go a very similar build. The big jump in from a Tumba Man. Yellow Warrior just kind of stands and watches himself get stabbed by the fiery sword of doom. He can't he can't actually outplay that. The, the way that the Ember Spirit is playing, it's almost impossible to actually charge a target. He uses chains and then he has to like turn around. If he wants to charge the Ember Spirit, he casts a Slight, so he can't actually target him. So then he, then he tries to wind up, and he just disappears off the map. Yeah, and, and then... And that's before the Winter's Curse even comes online. And he's so. almost dead already, just from just from that. I will soon be available. It, it's, it's a really good combo, this Ion Shell Ember Spirit. It's the EG style, back when Arteezy wasn't scarred from his <laughs> Star Ladder performance. <laughs> he's been grinding... <laughs> you know what PPD said when I was casting with him? He said, uh, he said, <laughs> I said, do you have anything to say to Arteezy? And he said, whenever, whenever Arteezy proves that he can play a hero better than Sumail, then he can have mid. <laughs> oh, cold, cold moves from the Salt Lord. And this ward, oh, this may see the smoke. Oh, just as it sees the big, four, actually a four hero rotation. This could be devastating for Empire. Let's see. You know, Resolution's been playing very well despite the pressure that he's received mid. He hasn't died once, which is pretty surprising. And he's going to have his Yules in just a Sage's Mask, which is probably, you know, 30 more seconds. Or could be even less if he gets a kill here. They're going to break the smoke. Five boys are ready for this Matumba Man. The one caught out at first. The call down still comes through. Connects on three. Actually make it four heroes. Asylum gets kept alive by a nice shallow grave. Good timing there. Storm zipping out to the high ground. Matumba Man has picked up a double kill. And they can't finish the job on Fada. Resolution continues pursuit. But he won't get the job done. Yolo Warrior now bringing the lantern to bear. As the pursuit continues towards Silent. Jumping deep. Matumba Man doesn't have the sleight of fist. It's only level one. And so they will end up just with the two kills. I don't actually think the vacuum and the wall hit anyone. I'm not 100% confident about it, but I was watching lane control and I think everyone else got their spells. They were like just outside of range. It's 
one of those vacuums where you think you can hit three people and then you hit zero. And you get none. Yeah. yeah. So it, that was. It's only a level one vacuum as well. They were even standing right there. So that was a really good response by Dyer, but at the same time, I think it could have been a lot better. Imagine if they if they get that. Yolo Warrior, what do you? Oh, he's yellow and <laughs> he's he's role playing here. He's like, I gotta live up to my name, guys. Slide of fist comes through the dazzle heal, not enough to save him. Kuro just punks him from above. That devastating nuke and now silent caught out in deep. Empire just going in one by one and getting punished for it. As Kuro will maul the helicopter down. He's, he just died rips to the out of the air. Oh my god. The silent fence so wow. dropping behind like his own tier two tower to that tombstone, as you mentioned. He, he died from, I'm, I'm almost certain it was like 90% HP. He was like tr trying to run up to help his team. He was like, oh crap, zombies are attacking me. Okay, I gotta run. Oh, While that's wait. happening, Resolution's trying desperately to salvage <laughs> the game. He's got the Yules now, so. Looks like he deployed it to find a soul. Yeah, even with his Staxel, and like now he's. He's I actually think, the leader in net yeah. worth, crazily enough. Storm has only died once. I, I still don't understand how like they stole so many stacks, and I he's guess it's the double runes. The double runes is a big deal. Ember going in mid. Making the dive here on the Jotam, a committed jump, and with the grave out, he's going to try to walk away. The spirit sent one direction, the hero the other. They really want to commit for this, the back well timed. We'll finish him off on the way out, and now the Ember needs to back up, but Kuro's in front. They drop the wall, almost a zoning wall, another side of his forward. Matumba Man re-engaging, doesn't have his Flame Guard any longer, but Poke and Prod, no! Almost dead, jumps away in the nick of time, will make it out. Very well played here. There's a long range jump from Fada, engaging onto the Yellow Warrior, who as usual is just at the middle of five enemy heroes and punished for it. Now their wards are really paying off, like both of those wards like help them secure kills. First on the Dazzle that was hiding behind, and then the other one with the spot of the Spirit Breaker. So now Empire, like they're kind of, you know, in that small quadrant. What do we call that? The I'm getting owned quadrant? This is, this is like when when you're, <laughs> like you know in MMA when like one guy's just dominating the other one, he's like curled up in a ball in the corner and the other one's just pummeling him and kicking him and it's the no mercy corner, Ben. Yep. That's, that's what I would call it. But Lena's, Lena's still fighting back. Selena, the fiery redhead, is doing her best. She is building, so it looks like straight towards the eggs here. Gets the point booster right away. I mean, their team fight is just, is just simply terrible right now. Gyrocopter has 850 HP. Like he has to rely on a grave to put him on the first. Not, not your most common gyro build nowadays. Yeah, I mean, he knows he has to get farmed because Ember is like manhandling it in terms of farm right now. Oh, and they like, got the charge vision off for Fada. But this is a long way to go. They have really good vision in the area. Dire vision, you can see. They they have eyes up the hill. Oh, this Observer Ward is just out of Sentry Ward range. If they saw that, they would know that they were smoked. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Very unfortunate. Five boys continue to apply pressure here in the bottom lane. Fada and Kuro will take the tower. And Kuro, by the way, I don't know if we mentioned this, has a Glimmer Cape and 700 gold in the bank. That's really bad for Empire. He's... And with the Wyvern, it's like normally the Wyvern's the one that farms the Glimmer, but he's just been given one for free. Before it was like, okay, they can probably kill people before they get Glimmer. Now it's 17 minutes in, and Undying has Glimmer. And Winter Wyvern's still pretty poor, though. So that, I, I guess that's pretty decent for them, but... Whew. They're up against the ropes here. Five boys looking to keep the pressure up. Smoked for now. I'm moving into the Radiant Jungle. Resolution, not actually... Oh, it was scouted just barely on the boundary of this one. The paints come out, the smoke will break. I think he might have gotten a glimpse just for a millisecond there. Yep. We'll back away. But uh, you can just see the way they're moving, Ben. Like, they're, they are not afraid of Empire. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to five-man to your tier two mid and and keep on pushing for more. At the same time, they keep fought a bottom, so... Like you mentioned, the aggressive vision just... So much map control. A really good decision to sack top, though. And if they go on top, they'll probably just file in one by one and just get owned by other single target. They need everyone there with like the glimmer and again like the cold embrace and the counter vacuum to actually be able to take team fights. And even though they only have four, it might look like a decent fight to take, uh, but they'd have to file in one by one or TP to the T2 and walk in full vision of that observer ward and get wrapped around behind. And that's. 
a pretty pretty easy way to uh, yeah, quote it's, unquote. It's a lot of a lot of qualifiers and, and ifs and possibilities. So it, it's just safe. too risky. They don't ha they don't need to take that risk. That tower doesn't really offer them that much because they're not farming their jungle that often. Now, Matumba man starts engaging, finds Jotam with the initial chains. Looks like Jotam will end up going down here. Brought down by a vacuum on the other side of the fight. Fauna gets caught by a stun. Now Aloha Dance looking for the TP out. See you later. No such luck as Jerax commits the Winter's Curse to secure the kill. So Empire, they take their tier one, but it comes at a cost of another two heroes. Score now 15 to four. It honestly doesn't look as bad as it feels. <laughs> Every time I turn around, there's Empire heroes dying, but only down 5k gold experience. Now Gyro's turning into a BKB. He, I mean, he, he does need HP. Their team fight is just way too strong. He cannot man up on the Ember. Which is really bad when a gyro can't man up on a hero this early in the game. Because generally it's like, okay, they has BKB and then gyro can't really do that much. But now it's... He is super squishy. Yeah, even building the BKB, he gets the Mithril Hammer first. So, buys the more expensive component, but remains sub-1000 HP at 20 go, minutes. Go Dezo, Silent. Go Dezo. <laughs> Just make it Dezo Rush. That's some next level shit, man. Maybe it's a Maelstrom Gyro. It'd be good for Roche. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're digging deep when you're talking about Gyro rushing or uh, <laughs> that so. But that slows his, down his item progression a lot because it doesn't help you farm. Ember Spirit, meanwhile, can go for damage. Evolution trapped out here. Does get the Yule Scepter off, but Mind Control's on the hunt. Needs a little more backup, and there's nothing in sight. They once again lose the Lina. And again, the wards. The wards have just been... Yeah. It feels like the, the biggest source of the five Jung success here. But Empire is playing pretty smartly and occupying the opponent's jungle because they know that they they know that they have wards somewhere in their jungle and they can't really have the resources to de ward them all. So instead of like trying to smoke and take control of it, they're going oh aloha dance. Hey buddy, wrong over place, here. wrong time. That would have worked plus or minus five seconds, but that exact moment was <laughs> the wrong choice. <laughs> of not, course, not he's not got that a DD run too, right yeah. when that happens. I mean, Poor he guy. that's. That's, I think, an appropriate risk for Lion, too, because he's trying to regain sort of, some sort of map control. Oh, no. Another hero picked up. Jotam caught out, and Fauna says, Thank you very much. I will take the Bloodstone Charge, sir. Zip, zap. Oh, boy. 11 Bloodstone Charges, Ben, and it feels like he has not had to work for these. Yeah, soon it's going to be Roche, and then a gem, and then Empire's forced to five man. And Resolution is kind of out on his own. He's like the only one that can get solo picks because Spirit Breaker is next to useless in this sort of game. Um, yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, there's a ton of ways to cancel charge. You've got the vacuum, the storm can just ball into him, the chains, potentially Winter's Curse. Then even if you catch someone, they're all tanky, it feels like. And they have Glimmer. And they have the Glimmer Cave. So there's... There's really not that much they can do. I, I didn't really like it as a last pick just because they didn't like round out their lineup. It's like, okay, we have a lot of single target, but then they have a lot of single target heal and sustain, and they have way better team fights. So what are we going to do once they actually five on five us? And it, pro it probably won't get to that point until the end of the game. Pray to the frog. That's, yeah, what, that's, that's what you do. Whenever you really you don't want to team fight their lineup right now, but you also really don't want to give Storm an Aegis and <laughs> when he has like 15 blood zone charges. Uh, the, the thought probably... Puts Empire quaking in their boots a bit. As we do see a Battle Fury already complete on Matamba Man. Keeps up with the Lina here. And I, I just want to point out the, the difference between the two teams. Like, you look at the five five junks. They have triple century to ensure their jungle is cleared out after seeing that one support. Empire, I don't think they've even dewarded once in their entire side of the map. Is, oh, thanks for the Bloodstone charge. Blue Spirit and the Red Spirit going to work, and Yolo Warrior will be next. That's two more for Fada. Look at Resolution. This guy's just like playing. He's the drawing slot on the mini map. He is mega frustrated. That's 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 a mega frustration. That, that, that's like there are wards everywhere right now, but no nowhere is safe. Yeah, he knows he can't go anywhere, but he needs. He oh needs no, Matumba with the big grab finds two with the sight of two chains, and now trying to TP out. Jotam will be denied by a vacuum. They pursue for more and additional chains. A swipe of those. Divide rapiers and down he goes. Four freebies. Oh, Youngs, they're gonna be up 1-0 at this rate, Ben. They're just stomping their way yeah, through. Yeah, their supports just play so much better than them. Like, even when there's no one in the lane, I think the like they still got more. They still got more experience uh, from just killing the Spirit Breaker by limiting Lena's farm in mid, uh, from getting vision of their stacks and like all these small things that the supports on Dire did that the Radiant just like I mean. It, 
they just needed to stack like three or four camps, protect it from storm, you know, get runes and that sort of stuff. Maybe push down a tower a little bit earlier, but everything just came too slowly from them, and their lineup is not built around, you know, waiting to fight like at 15 minutes. You have to like win the lanes very early, get rotations, kill storm a lot. Even though they have the BKB now, do you, do you feel like that's something that can change the game for Empire? Or no, he was just get, just too late. He'll just get Winner's Curse. Well, uh, Dan's trapped out as quickly as he shows up. He drops Resolution, trying to get something out of this. Matumba Man still well above the threshold of that Laguna Blade. And Ag's not yet complete sliding through, looking for an additional kill on Mr. Yolo Warrior, who's... Well, Matumba Man is playing like the real Yolo Warrior here as he runs into the cow, gets past Laguna, but he dodges it with the remnant. What a play! Tumba still ends up going down to silent in the end, but a sick attempt to get out there. Now Kuro arrives looking to clean up an IL-3 Fada. 14 Bloodstone charges, looking for more. Make it 15, make it 16 at 24 minutes. 0. 0.6 Bloodstone charges a minute and rising. This is getting out of hand. And oh, what do you know? A free regen round, though. This time, mind control, I get it. A wee bit of mercy, perhaps, for Foof Youngs. Uh, they just they just have no control for these guys. Yeah, I think uh, they, they, again they really wanted the Spirit Breaker to do a lot, which is, it, and they, they warded for him in a way that didn't really help mid as much. Yeah, he was he 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 just didn't gank at all through the lading stage. Died a couple times, and they might have needed like the dazzle I think to support him on top, uh, because Spirit Breaker is not a good jungler. So your only options are to a gank Storm, b just tank the deaths on top and die which is pretty much what he did but as we can see that didn't work out terribly well or three bring up dazzle or yet another support up top and i think the third option would have been the best in retrospect but it was it was difficult for them at the time because they didn't know that dire had a uh, ward in mid so even if they had gone for that option not very much. Umba looking for free kills all over the map silent charge for the tp out and barely makes it but this means instead matumba man is going to dive jotum Sliding his way through deep onto the creep wave. The charge onto the dazzle. Or uh, rather, onto the ember will end up being cancelled. Yolo warrior not feeling so YOLO anymore. Can't say yeah. I blame the poor guy. I think the dazzle just also doesn't fit in the lineup. Like generally you see dazzle like in a situation where he can play aggressively. Like let's say with a shadow demon that's kind of outdated. but uh, Or with a phantom lancer or naga somewhere where you can just heal bomb. Oh resolution walks right into a trap. Oh, well, who's trapped him? Fada does get clipped by the initial stun. The follow-up charge is there. And then another strike. Bam! They take down that storm. Even after the death, though, still holding strong. A 10 bloodstone charge. Nope, but I'm they alive end again. a mega kill streak here. Courier. Looks like it will be okay. As Ember takes a free tower. Yeah, Fada already back in the game. Well, now he has his BKB, so now he's pretty much immune to the Lina combo. Uh, oh, he didn't actually have it delivered yet, because I saw he bought yeah. it, but I guess it was on the Courier still. Man, if he has that BKB there, <laughs> and you're mega sad. Well, now fine. Lion is pretty much just completely boned. He's halfway to his bling dagger, but with the BKB up, the, <laughs> he's lucky to get it. Jerex in no man's land with the gem. Uh-oh, this could be big. They get that initial charge off. Follow-up stun comes through from Resolution. That's the double damager in here, but Jerex is glimmered, kept alive, mecked up, healed as well, potentially, by Kuroki. In fact, he already was. Now the storm rushes forward, right back in the fright. Zip, zap, over here, over there. You can't stop me. Maybe they can. Fada never BKB'd, but the back comes through. Still alive, hexed up. He hasn't got anything off. Winter's curse, three down, about to be four. Silent, desperately holding the line, fighting for all he's worth. A little bit more. He doesn't have the damage, and he will end up going down. Foof Young's again and again just overpowering Empire and they don't even wait to watch their base burn. Throw up the double G's. That is that was that's the right play. It it they are using a stand in here with Jotam. It felt like maybe there was some miscommunication with the supports with the stacking. You mentioned they could have adjusted the lanes. We didn't see that early on. So maybe a stand in effect here. But I have to say in the other games I've seen out of Empire, it feels like they're missing something without Yoku. Missing a coherent game plan. It's like a lot of them are playing too solo, I think, and too greedy and without looking at the overall big picture. Whereas I think the supports on Dire, they had a better big pictures. Like Kuro is like, okay, I'm going to secure Storm's Farm. I'm going to make Spirit Breaker useless. And he pretty much did both of those. And then. Yeah, their supports had no waste of time. They're getting aggressive yeah. wards up. They're helping him steal the stacks. Like, even mind control from the offlane comes mid, puts an ion shell on the storm. 
just so he can take the triple stack earlier. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, coherent game plan. And they just had a better draft, I think, too. Uh -huh. What can you do when the when the spirits come out, man? <laughs> they were missing the earth spirit. Not pick year. lion third. Yeah, he he he. The supports were just under leveled all game. It felt like. Yeah, I mean they they could they they didn't farm the jungle well. I don't really. <laughs> they know missed their stacks. The they, they were just lost. Let's yeah. be honest. Well, let's hope that they can find their way, guys. Because if not, they're going to be getting knocked down here very early on. Game one of our best of three in the books. Game two coming up next. Stick around. You're watching the Nanyang Championships.